How's it going, everyone? Uh, since I have a tiny, tiny little bit of time on my hands today, I'm going to run through my whole guitar setup. This is what I use at home to practice and at live shows. Here we've got a 50 watt EVH 5153 um, made by Fender. Pretty solid amp. Uh, 50 watts, in my opinion, is all you need. Um, I can crank it to almost halfway on the volume and it's plenty loud any venue that my band or any band similar would be playing at live most of the venues are going to tell you to turn your stage volume down regardless so you don't necessarily need the massive 100 watt one um, that head is going into a veracity custom 2x12 cab um, that i had friend garrett who lives in lansing make for me um, unfortunately i don't think he makes cabs like this anymore. He does different woodworking things, but uh, I'm very glad he was able to do this one for me. On the left, we have a 16 ohm Celestion V30, and on the right, we have also a 16 ohm Celestion Creamback. All of that goes into my pedal board with this snake that I had made um, by My Star Sound. We've got four channels on it. We've got the input that goes in the front here and then in the back not sure how well you can see this but these are the two speaker cables on the end and then in the center there the blue and the red are the send and return to the left of that is a gray cable that's the foot switch and then the power all the way over on the left I can't remember the exact model but it's just a small quarter racks or a half rack size Furman power amp. Uh, this cord over here goes to the wall. This one right here is for my pedal board, and this one is from the head. It just protects protects against any high or too low voltage. Uh, bumps it up to 120 volts at all times. And then the bottom one is a live-in cab case, so I'll just pop down that panel and plug in the cords. Uh, both of these cases I got used because as long as the road case is still rolling, I'll <clears throat> buy it. Anyway, um, so all that comes down here in, into my pedal board. I built this pedal board with a Temple board from Temple Audio. Um, so from the head, we get the input, send, return, and the foot switch and the power. And the pedal board is turned on by this one switch. The signal chain goes wireless into this volume pedal and the volume pedal on the back here has a tuner out so i can plug in my polytune tuner and have it on at all times without it silencing my guitar how i want it if i want to turn off my volume i can either push the volume pedal all the way down or just turn it off on the actual guitar um, so it's coming directly out of the volume pedal into the tuner stops there but there's also uh, another out that goes into this jhs buffer a uh, buffer is essentially something that when you have a ton of pedals in your signal chain, um, the signal is weakened from all the power being sucked out of it. Uh, so this buffer kind of gives it gives it a boost and doesn't allow for any signal loss. It's on all the time. I've never had any issues with it at all. Um, and then from there, we go into the drop tune pedal because... With these drop tunes, you want the cleanest signal possible. And we, I really only use this for one song right now because um, my band, Our Vices, generally plays in drop A and drop B. Um, and then we made one song so far in G sharp. So I'll just take my drop A guitar and put it on one half step down and leave this pedal on for the entirety of the song. Uh, that is going into a Nano Attack by Horizon Devices. Uh, I adjusted some things in the back of the pedal with the volume and whatever the other channel were, was. Uh, I can't remember what those are right now, but I generally keep this pedal on the first or the second uh, channel. That goes out of there into the Decimator 2 noise gate, which is, in my opinion, the best noise gate you could possibly buy. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what that does in a minute. And then from the noise gate, it goes um, 
out into the input of the head. So the only thing in front of the amp are the wireless volume pedal, the tuner, buffer, drop tune, nano attack, decimator. So really the only thing affecting my actual tone in front of the amp is this nano attack. Everything else um, is always on and just provi provides a cleaner, stronger signal into the head. The effects loop has the big sky, the delay, and then the tremolo. The big sky is what I use the most. It's a reverb pedal um, that has thousands upon thousands of different sounds you can get out of it. Um, so I use that for lead stuff and choruses and clean parts. Um, and then I also have this digital delay, main ingredient in making the song ethereal. Just a regular old delay, not much to it. <clears throat> and then there's a tremolo pedal up here that I got for like 35 bucks used at Guitar Center. Um, it used to have a light that would turn on and this little knob, but it doesn't anymore. So I guess that's what you get for 35 bucks. Use it only a couple times in breakdowns and wherever it sounds cool. Um, so all of that is in the effects loop. And then down here we've got the standard EVH uh, foot switch. You know what? I completely forgot to talk about the uh, guitars here. Uh, this guitar is a Neko Hydra 6. All the hardware and pickups and everything I replaced from the original stuff, except the three-way switch that's still original. Um, I swapped out whatever pickups that it had in it for some burnt chrome-covered uh, bare-knuckle juggernauts. Pretty amazing pickups, if you ask me. They're passive. Um, and then I have a hip shot fixed bridge, hip shot open gear, uh, golden black locking tuners, this random wooden knob that I found on uh, Reverb. And then on both my guitars I have a black DiMarzio clip-on strap with a receiver pack. And this guitar is usually uh, tuned in drop A and I use NYXLs. It's a custom set. Uh, there's a 68 on the bottom and a 11 on the top. And then my second guitar, which is the only other one I usually use live, is a Ibanez RG321. Um, I got this one used at Guitar Center for like 200 bucks and it needed quite a bit of cleaning and work on it. I think it only had one string. Um, so I did the same thing on this one as I did on the the Neko where I swapped out all of the hardware and the pickups. Um, it has the same exact pickups, the bare knuckle juggernauts, but these ones have a black cover with matte black um, bolts as the pickup posts. When you have the bolts sticking out of the pickup covers, um, the tone is more high end in it. Um, when I do a, obviously every guitar is different, but when I do a back to back comparison between the tone of this one and the tone of the Neko, this one is, definitely has a sharper tone to it. Um, I don't plan on changing the ones in the Neko, that's just how it is. But I have the same bridge on here, a hip shot fixed bridge. Um, I have two black hip shot O-ring knobs, um, the original five-way switch on this one. And then again, I have the all black and gold hip shot open gear locking tuners. Same strap, uh, this one I have a vial company patch on it a clothing company that our band is sponsored by and then the wireless this is the first guitar i ever owned i bought it at a pawn shop in like seventh grade for 120 bucks or something like that um when i very first bought it it had a white pick guard and a hss setup with a humbucker and two single coils and it had a um, tremolo on it. Being the very bright person I was like three years ago, or however long it was, I thought that I could turn my guitar into a 27 inch scale guitar without changing the neck whatsoever, which is totally not a thing that you can do because the frets are lined up for certain scales and if you try to alter the scale in any way, you're just going to be out of tune 99% of the time, even if you think the guitar is in tune. So, that was quite a bit of a fail on my part. Uh, the guitar still plays and sounds decent uh, when I'm playing between like the first and fifth fret, but I definitely am going to have to go back and probably get a hip shot uh, tremolo and 
put it in there. There's the back of it. This one has the same bridge as the other two, the O-ring knob. Um, but this time around, I've just got one single humbucker and it's all matte black covered uh, bare knuckle Ragnarok. It's the slightly higher um, gain pickup that they have. Um, and then I got this janky like $20 black uh, pick guard on there. And then the same locking tuners, golden black. And I have no idea what strings are on here right now because I haven't actually played in quite a while. But um, that's definitely a project. My Ibanez. <laughs> The tuner is on all the time, uh, you can kind of see it right here. So if I'm playing something I want to tune, make sure I'm in tune on the fly, I can just peek at that. But volume pedal does exactly what it's supposed to. Uh, the drop tune set at half step down right now, so if I press the pedal. Go down full step. And you can go down all the way to an entire octave, which just sounds ridiculous. It also has this cool momentary switch on here. And the nano attack, this is with it. Flubby loses that attack. And then up here we've got the decimator that I was talking about. Uh, right now we're looking at about a negative 15 dB threshold um, when this thing is turned off. It sounds like not grounded correctly. And throw that boy on. Throw the effects loop on with a little um, lead reverb. That's also really, really cool on clean stuff. Definitely hear there's a bit of a gain behind the clean tone. Fourth position on the five way. Uh, my pedal board here so yeah thank you if you guys uh, made it this far on the video please be sure to not only subscribe to the channel but if you want me to go more in depth on a specific part of my rig uh, any pedal on my pedal board the head the guitars uh, please comment below and let me know what you want me to make another video for see you guys next time